to number 10, we have King Charles and his raunchy phone calls with Camilla. Now this one is pretty gross, honestly. We are full aware of King Charles' marriage to his previous wife Diana, and how it was not a good time at all. There was infidelity on both sides here, but the one that really peed people off was Charles' affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. During the time that Camilla and Charles were still with their husband and wife respectively, the two did have some rather mm, interesting secret phone calls. 1992 was the year that Charles and Diana officially separated, but it was also the year when one of these phone conversations were leaked to the public, and Charles had quite a few interesting things to say during that conversation. Things that I don't think I'm even really allowed to say here. Let's just say it had to do with um, feminine hygiene and call it a day. If you are interested, feel free to research because I'm moving on. Hey, if you think the royal family's dark secrets are juicy, hit that like button. It really helps out our channel. Thanks, guys. And with that at number nine, we have Diana. Just the whole situation. And in a way, this also kind of extends to the more recent Meghan Markle controversy. You see, Diana was a very, very open individual. The people loved her, and she had no issue being honest about her hardships. Among the royals, Diana was the most human, and she would make this fact known by being open and honest about her human struggles, especially being a part of the incredibly structured, judgmental, and old-fashioned royal family. In November 1995, the princess gave a television interview during which she spoke of her unhappiness in her personal life and the pressures of her public role. Specifically, Diana suffered from depression and bulimia, which she talked about in length, and it honestly accrued her a lot more love from the people than she already had. And in turn, it also turned the public against the royal family even more, especially as Charles and friends of his would use her words against her, claiming that anything she accused Charles of was caused by her psychological issues. It's kind of truly disgusting, and adds to the reason some people believe the monarchy should be abolished. At number 8, we have people's doubts about whether or not Charles is actually Harry's biological father. With all the scandal that was surrounding Charles and his former wife Diana, it was starting to look like there couldn't possibly be any more reports about them that could surface. That was until a few people scratched beyond the surface in one of Diana's tell-alls. In 1995, in an interview on BBC's Panorama with a journalist named Martin Bashir, Diana admitted to an affair she carried out for five years with a military man named James Hewitt. There was in Intense speculation once Diana passed that James was potentially the biological father of her son Harry and not Charles as originally believed. And despite their ever so prominently similar looks, James denied being Harry's real dad. James detailed that it wouldn't have been possible because Harry was conceived prior to the start of his and Diana's relationship. Still, people be speculating. At number seven, we have the Queen and her secret cousins. Aired on Channel 4 for the British Network in 2011 was a documentary called The Queen. Hidden Cousins, where it was revealed that there was a scandal that managed to conceal itself from the eye of the public for decades. Way back in the 1940s, the stigma around mental disabilities was very prominent, and it wasn't seen or understood as well as it is now. Obviously, with Diana, this stigma reared its ugly head, but the Queen's first cousins, Catherine and Nerissa, fell victim to their physical and mental issues as well. The nieces of the Queen Mother were placed into a mental institution in 1941 and remained there for the rest of their lives. Because of this, Nerissa and Catherine were said to have been cut off from the lives of the royal family forever. A nurse in the documentary who oversaw the cousins made it very clear that not once did the royals ever go to see Catherine or Nerissa. This claim was obviously disputed by the royal family, but I, 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 I obviously don't doubt it. At number six, we have Princess Beatrice who dated a criminal. While she was seventh in line for the throne and held the title of being the queen's granddaughter, Beatrice was also a socialite and philanthropist. However, she also made some fairly sketchy dating decisions in her past. For example, back in 2006 when the princess was a mere 17 years old, Beatrice started seeing American playboy Paolo Lawuzo. However, ahead of his relationship with Beatrice, Paolo was indicted for taking the life of a 19 year old man named Jonathan Duchatelier. Jonathan reportedly passed away as a result of the injuries he sustained from Paolo in 2002. The incident was said to have taken place after Jonathan had confronted Paolo about his disrespect towards females at a party. However, the charge of manslaughter was eventually dropped and then reduced. This, however, did not stop Paolo from breaking the terms of his probation to woo Beatrice with a trip to the French Alps. Unsurprisingly, these two did not last. 
At number 5 we have the incident of the Duchess of York being caught on camera getting her toes sucked. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Sarah Ferguson was married to a certain prince whose very name isn't allowed on YouTube. That is a whole other story I'm not even allowed to talk about, but the pair ended up separating in 1992. When their marriage began to run its course, Sarah was a lot less discreet about her courting of other men, which of course again resulted in the royal family's snubbing. The situation escalated even further when Sarah was pictured at a beach with financer John Bryan. During their sandy getaway, Sarah was topless and reporters managed to capture some pics of Bryan sucking Sarah's toes. Gross. I don't, I don't like that. Naturally, the queen was not having any of that and ended up banning Sarah from Balmoral Castle. At number 4 we have Princess Anne and her dog who seemingly enjoyed attacking people. As the only daughter of the late Queen Elizabeth and the sibling of Charles, surprisingly, this is one princess who I didn't think could land in any scandals. From her charity work to her seemingly kind heart, it's almost shocking to know that she's made our countdown. And yet, back when Anne and her husband were placing their dogs into a car after a walk around Windsor Great Park in 2002, one of the dogs, an English Bull Terrier, managed to escape and savagely attack two boys who were enjoying their bike ride in the park. The couple were taken to court and served an $880 fine that they were ordered to pay. This marked the very first time a senior royal had ever been charged with a criminal offense. In a turn of events that was greatly upsetting to the victim's families, the dog was allowed to live and reportedly the next year or so ended up mauling one of the queen's most beloved corgis, which the royal family probably took more seriously. That's not a fact, but they seemed pretty self-interested so it wouldn't be surprising. At number 3 we have Princess Margaret's string of affairs. The queen's sister, the late Princess Margaret, managed to grasp the interest of the public due to her interesting lifestyle choices. Margaret never once feared living her life however she pleased, as most shouldn't, and was widely known to be a heavy drinker and smoker since she was 15. Despite her marriage to Anthony Armstrong Jones, a photographer in 1960, Margaret didn't quite slow down her player lifestyle. She started an affair with a gardener in 1973 who was reportedly 17 years younger than her. And she wasn't able to escape the press in 1976 when a picture of her and her reported lover Roddy Llewellyn made the front page and headlined the now discontinued news outlet News of the World. This was just the start of Margaret's string of affairs that rocked the boat in her marriage and by the time 1978 rolled around, the former couple's divorce was finalized, but I'm sure she was perfectly fine. In at number 2 we have first cousins Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. The running joke surrounding the royal family all mixing their DNA and bearing children together has been a constant thing for as long as the royals have been. However, some people don't actually know that this banter is factually correct for some of the couples of the royal family. Cousins and more distant relatives often get betrothed to each other. Something about royal bloodlines, which is thankfully a very archaic way of thinking. Even the late Queen Elizabeth and her husband were related. Philip and Elizabeth shared a great great grandmother, Queen Victoria. Philip was a direct descendant of Princess Alice, the third child of Queen Victoria, while Queen Elizabeth is a direct descendant of Queen Victoria's oldest son, who became King Edward VII. Speaking of Victoria, her and her husband Albert were actually first cousins. They got married in 1840 and shared nine children in their time together. The thing is, royals always married others of similar status in the world, and since historically royals would make alliances through marriage, bloodlines are interconnected all over Europe. Not really a secret, but still. Ick. At number 1 we have Princess Anne's son-in-law who spent a night in a dwarf tossing club. Yes, this one is strange and yes it did very much happen. Despite Mike Tyndall not being a royal by blood, his everlasting marriage to Princess Anne's daughter, Zara Phillips, decrees that he is on the ends with the royals. However, his connection to the family could not save the English rugby player from the backlash that occurred after it was reported he spent one of his nights in 2011 at a quote dwarf tossing club in New Zealand. According to articles from the time, Mike and his team went to celebrate their win against Argentina at the club. And despite Mike insisting he nor his teammates actually threw a dwarf, just him being present in such a location was enough to spark massive outrage in the media. And understandably so, that was kind of messed up. Number 10 Harry's Misconduct Back in 2005, Prince Harry attended a costume party dressed as a 
paparazzi. This is a risky enough outfit for anyone, let alone a British royal. Of course, pictures from the party were leaked to the press, who plastered it all over their front pages. Harry, who was 20 years old at the time, really should have known better, but he still made a public apology from his royal offices, which read, Prince Harry has apologized for any offense or embarrassment he has caused. He realizes it was a poor choice of costume, but the papers held onto the story for quite some time, and it caused widespread outrage worldwide. Then four years later, in 2009, the prince was dealt another huge blow to his reputation when a tape emerged of him using racial slurs against members of his own army platoon. In the video, you can hear the prince using offensive language as well as racist terms. Once again, Harry had to make a public apology to try and save the royal family from further embarrassment. It didn't work and the footage was relentlessly replayed around the world. If you're loving this video so far, please hit that like button, it would really help us out. Number 9. Prince Andrew's Friend The disgraced prince is no stranger to controversy. In 2011, it emerged that he was good friends with convicted sex offender and American financier Jeffrey Epstein. He was married to Sarah Ferguson, who came forward confirming their friendship and revealed that her ex-husband had asked Epstein to clear some of her debts. Although he later reported that he had cut all ties with Epstein, Buckingham Palace came under new pressure to explain their relationship with the American in 2015. The royal family has since tried to distance themselves from Andrew when his disturbing ties became public and there was a civil case brought against him. Not long after that, it was announced that he would be stripped of his military titles and royal patronages and would no longer be allowed to use the title His Royal Highness in any official capacity. The trouble is that no one really knows the full extent of Andrew's involvement with Epstein, but the public mood still seems so set against him that he will likely not be able to return to public life for quite some time. Number 8. The Hidden Cousins In 2011, an explosive documentary was released called The Queen's Hidden Cousins, which revealed a scandal that has avoided the public eye for decades. In the 1940s, mental illness was not understood as much as it is today, and so the royal family viewed it as an embarrassment when two of the Queen's first cousins, Nerissa and Catherine Bolzleon, were born with severe learning difficulties. Born in 1919 and 1926 respectively, Nerissa and Catherine were never able to be a part of the royal family. Instead, they were incarcerated in a mental institution in 1941 and remained in care there for the rest of their lives. In the documentary, nurses who oversaw them categorically stated that no members of the family ever came to visit the two sisters, who were unable to articulate speech but apparently had a great spirit about them. When the story of the sisters' existence was published in 1987, a scandal instantly erupted when it emerged that the royal family had apparently erased two of its members from their lives entirely. Number 7. Diana's Biography It's no secret that Prince Charles and Diana had a terrible marriage, but unlike many royals, Diana was vocal about her private affairs. We know that she felt like a total outsider within the royal family and felt like a prisoner trapped in a loveless marriage. In Diana's biography, she recounted a desperate time when she felt truly shut out by her husband. Quote, Charles said I was crying wolf. I said I felt so desperate I was crying my eyes out. And he said, I'm not going to listen, you're always doing this to me. I'm going to go riding now. So I threw myself down the stairs. She ended up falling right at the queen's feet and as it turns out, Elizabeth and Charles had nearly polar opposite reactions to her cry for help. According to Diana, the queen comes out absolutely horrified, shaking, she was so frightened. Diana said that she was quite bruised around the stomach but when Charles came back from riding, he just dismissed the whole incident and carried on out the door. Number 6. The Hospital Incident Charles has always had a bit of a rocky relationship when it comes to being a father to his two sons William and Harry. Although nothing really displayed his attitude as a parent more than the hospital incident in 1991 when an 8 year old Prince William underwent emergency surgery for a skull fracture. The little prince was hit on the head with a golf club while playing with schoolmates. The injury was so serious that he was kept overnight at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital following an hour long operation. Princess Diana spent the night sleeping in a bed set up near William's room so she could look after her son. Whereas Prince Charles took a different approach entirely. Rather than stay and comfort his wife and injured son, after a 15 minute visit, the prince left the hospital to go to the opera. It's no surprise that when Buckingham Palace was informed of the prince's decision to keep his previous plans but keep in touch with doctors, he was completely bashed by the tabloids. Number 5. Beatrice's Boyfriend The queen's 
granddaughter, Princess Beatrice, is ninth in line for the throne now. She's well known for being a socialite and a philanthropist, but she has certainly made some sketchy dating decisions in the past. In 2006, when the princess was just 17 years old, she started dating an American playboy called Paolo. This relationship was very troubled. Not only was Paolo older than the teenage princess, but he had a dark past. Prior to his relationship with Beatrice, Paolo was arrested for the manslaughter of 19 year old Jonathan Duchatelia. Well, apparently he decided to confront Paolo for disrespecting women at a party, so he got beat up. Amazingly, the manslaughter charge was dropped and reduced to a lesser charge, but he even broke the terms of his probation while dating Beatrice by taking a trip to the French Alps. Talk about red flags. But thankfully, their relationship didn't last long at all. Number four, Princess Anne's marriage. As the only daughter of Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Anne's romantic life has been under a microscope since she was young. Despite the fact that the princess lives a relatively private life away from the constant scrutiny that often follows a member of the royal family. She married Lieutenant Mark Phillips in 1973 at Westminster Abbey in a highly televised and anticipated ceremony, but their marriage was deeply troubled. And Phillips ended up having an affair with New Zealand art teacher Heather Tonkin. This resulted in a daughter being born in 1985. The marriage was in complete shambles, but struggled on for four more years before Princess Anne and Mark Phillips separated in 1989. The divorce was finalized a few years later in 1992. Interestingly enough, Anne remarried later that year, becoming the first royal divorcee since Henry VIII. Their wedding was much more reserved than the first one, with only 30 guests and no cameramen. And 30 years later, they are still happily together. Number three, Margaret's heartbreak. Princess Margaret famously fell in love with Peter Townsend and was so dedicated to the man that she actually planned to marry him. But the relationship was doomed from the beginning as he was 16 years older than her and already married with two children. While Townsend eventually divorced his wife in 1952, the Church of England's then strict rules about remarriage after divorce forced Margaret's hand. Under the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, the princess required the queen's permission to marry before the age of 25. Although she had turned 25 that August, she still needed the parliament's approval and they had already made it clear that they would never offer her consent. She would have been able to marry him if she gave up her title and rights of succession. But Margaret was also aware that it would have never been allowed by the church either. She released a heartbreaking statement saying, it might have been possible for me to contract a civil marriage, but mindful of the church's teaching that Christian marriage is indissoluble, I have resolved to put these considerations before any others. Number two, Princess Diana struggles. In 1992, Andrew Morden published his biography on the Princess of Wales called Diana, Her True Story. It contained explosive details about Diana's eating disorder, something that was long rumored in the press but never covered this extensively. It turns out his source for it all was Diana herself, who passed the author confessional tapes. Quote, the bulimia started the week after we got engaged and would take nearly a decade to overcome. My husband put his hand on my waistline and said, oh, a bit chubby here, aren't we? And that triggered off something in me and the Camilla thing. I was desperate. Diana revealed that she was driven to an eating disorder by being trapped in a loveless marriage and the pressure of being in the public eye. But her raw, candid confession sent shockwaves through the world at a time when eating disorders were really talked about openly. To have a global superstar do so and on such a stage challenged a major societal stigma. And coming in at number one, Prince John. Born on July 12th, 1905, Prince John was the youngest son of King George V, the Queen's grandfather. The young boy reportedly suffered from epilepsy and the royal family was not particularly interested in having him live a very public life as a royal because of the stigmas behind the disorder. So they deployed a very familiar tactic to cope with what they thought would have been a scandal. They hid the child away from public view. Royal biographer Christopher Wilson has noted that some family trees completely leave out Prince John's name. He explained that if they feel they have somebody that isn't up to scratch, they want to write them out of the history books. And this happened in the case of Prince John. The moment that he died, we hear no more about him, which is incredibly sad, but not unusual behavior when it comes to the British monarchy. Number 10, Prince Harry. Since stepping down from royal duties, Prince Harry has made his disdain for Charles pretty apparent, but he took his family beef to the next level when he criticized Charles's parenting on Dak Shepard's Armchair Expert podcast. The 36 year old claimed that his father handed down a cycle of genetic pain and suffering to him, which is why he and his wife Meghan Markle moved to Los Angeles. Harry says that they got out of the royal family to break the cycle. Quote, he treated me the way he was treated. So how can I change that for my kids? We as parents should be doing the most we can do to try and say, you know what, that happened to me and I'm gonna make sure that doesn't happen to you. Harry went on to describe his life 
as a royal as a mixture of the Truman Show and being in a zoo. In fact, Harry said that he had debated leaving the royal family since his early 20s because of what it did to his mom, which contradicts the narrative that Meghan was the one who wanted to leave. Number nine, Meghan Markle. During her explosive interview with Oprah Winfrey, the Duchess of Sussex claimed that someone in the family had expressed concern about the complexion of her child's skin. It was then that the allegations started to snowball and Prince Harry told a star that the incident happened right at the beginning of the pregnancy and left him a bit shocked. Meghan told Oprah, in those months when I was pregnant all around the same time, we have in tandem the conversation of, he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Then a royal book by Christopher Anderson revealed that a source close to the family claimed that it was Charles who made the comment during a conversation over breakfast with his wife Camilla on the day that Meghan and Harry's engagement was announced. He allegedly asked Camilla, I wonder what the children will look like and lowering his voice asking, I mean what do you suppose the children's complexion might be? So it wasn't exactly subtle. Number 8 Trevor Noah. The Daily Show host made it clear that he is not a fan of the new king at all and decided to make fun of his pen complaints. The British monarch got the whole internet laughing with his bizarre behaviour because it was all caught on camera. The first time he frantically urged staff to clear the extra pens from his desk while he signed his accession proclamation. The second time was when he got really mad over a leaky pen, saying, I can't bear this bloody thing. What do they do every stinking time? But Trevor Noah thought he was being ridiculous and said, what the hell was that? Did you see that thing that he did? He's also the ruler of an animal kingdom. I love how Charles says the pens leak on him all the time. You're literally the king of England, dude. If you don't like the pens, get different pens. I'm not an expert in the monarchy, but I'm pretty sure the hierarchy doesn't go. Prince William, King Charles, and then the guy who buys the pens. Number seven, Jesse Armstrong. The creator and writer of HBO Succession decided to use his acceptance speech at this year's Emmys to take a dig at King Charles. Jesse Armstrong graced the stage twice, once to pick up an award for his writing on the show, and again with the entire cast and crew to receive the Outstanding Drama Series Award. He said, a big week for successions, new king in the UK, this for us, evidently a little more voting involved in our winning than Prince Charles. Even in a room full of Americans, the audience was very shocked at this risky joke, and gasps could be heard on live broadcast. When there was a bit of an uncomfortable silence, the show's lead actor Brian Cox told him, keep it royalist. But Jesse kept going and said, I'm not saying we're more legitimate in our position than he is. We'll leave that to the other people. According to eyewitness accounts, there was very little laughter in the room and most people just felt plain awkward. Number six, Tony Blair. The royals are expected to understand that party politics and individual politicians are totally off limit for public comment. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair was so furious about Prince Charles's behavior during his time in Downing Street that he reportedly complained about him to Queen Elizabeth. He accused Charles of crossing the line and meddling in political matters by trying to influence government policy. The ex-slavery leader was said to have become exasperated by his interventions over agriculture, the armed forces, architecture and homeopathy, and even genetically modified foods. Then scandal erupted for both men in 2015 when they became embroiled in the scandal known as the Black Spider Memos, which was a collection of 27 letters that Charles sent from 2004 to 2005, lobbying the British PM for the policy changes that he hoped for. This was a pretty big controversy considering that members of the royal family are supposed to stay out of politics and remain neutral, especially the ones who were always destined to be king. Number five, Princess Diana. When Prince Charles wed Diana in 1981 in front of a global television audience of more than 750 million people, the couple seemed to be perfect for each other. But behind the scenes, the marriage had extreme problems and it became apparent that Charles was having an affair with Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall. A heartbroken Diana bravely decided to expose the affair in an infamous 1992 interview saying there were three of us in this marriage so it was a bit crowded. Subsequently Charles publicly admitted to being unfaithful in his own interview and the couple eventually divorced in 1996. With his admission of guilt there was already public outrage growing against him but it all came to a head when the princess was killed in a Paris car crash in 1997. From that point on there were vitriolic outpourings in the press against both him and Camilla and his popularity sank to an all-time low. So the British public, who is still very protective
protective of Diana still haven't been able to forgive Charles for how he treated her during their ill-fated marriage. Number 4 Richard Rogers The award-winning British architect had made it known that when it comes to his career and livelihood, his biggest enemy is King Charles, who has used his power and influence on several occasions to step in at the last minute and object to Richard's designs. In one instance, Charles personally wrote a letter to his client, the Prime Minister of Qatar, another royal, to say that Richard's design was too modern to be built on a site that was so close to Christopher Wren's 17th century Chelsea Hospital. So the architect was kicked off the job and the British architectural establishment was up in arms. Richard said, I don't believe that the Prince of Wales understands architecture. He thinks it is fixed at one point in the past. He occupies a privileged position and he should not use that to damage the livelihoods of the people that he disagrees with. While it's common knowledge that Charles has a huge disdain for modern architecture, which is probably classist in some way or another, it seems as though he is not above ruining someone's career over his taste in buildings. Number 3 Boris Johnson The former Prime Minister and the new reigning monarch always had a rocky relationship, but they got into a major spat when Boris started pushing the controversial Rwanda asylum plan. The policy would have allowed the government to remove asylum seekers who crossed the channel to the UK and send them to Rwanda to claim asylum there instead. In short, Boris thought it was a great plan and Charles said that the idea sounded appalling. The former British PM hit back at his comments, saying that most people could see that criminal gangs need to be stopped and that it's the job of the government to stop people breaking the law. But their relationship really began to sour and Charles eventually invited Boris to his estate for a meeting, which was a complete disaster from start to finish, as Boris reportedly didn't show him any respect and there was clearly a lot of tension between them. Number 2 Nigel Farage The broadcaster and former politician was quick to criticise King Charles's opinion on the controversial Rwanda policy. Farage took to Twitter and slammed his comments, writing, Unless Prince Charles wants to destroy the monarchy, he had better shut up fast. Not only did he disagree with his point of view, but the fact that he expressed it at all, considering that yes, he is a royal and should not be making his political opinions public. But Farage really came under fire after posting a clip that seemed to mock Queen Elizabeth's death. He shared a five second clip to his TikTok account, which has now been viewed more than six million times, with the caption, The Queen is dead, long live the king. In the video, Nigel looked and sounded incredibly sarcastic and said, The Queen is dead, long live the King, sad day but we now have a King. He also shared the post on Twitter. No one was really sure what he meant by it but a lot of people thought it was inappropriate considering how little emotion he showed while making the announcement. And coming in at number 1, Princess Catherine. The royals are known for their discretion and their decorum, so you might not know that the new King of England did not get along with his daughter-in-law at all. Although Kate and William have been an item for over a decade, Charles reportedly didn't embrace her when she was first introduced to the family and did not approve of their relationship. Part of the reason was because they were immensely popular, and Kate and William would send the media into a tailspin every time they left the palace. Their whirlwind romance began just a few years after Charles married Camilla, and unfortunately, the older couple didn't seem too happy about sharing the spotlight with the younger couple. In 2011, the pair flew to Canada and LA on their first official trip as a royal couple. They reported hoped to impress King Charles, but all he seemed to care about was the fact that they posed in too many tasteless photos. So Kate's relationship with her father-in-law was rocky from the beginning. Number 10 Unpopular Now that Charles is king, his new role is going to be daunting, and he has a real uphill battle to restore his tarnished reputation. Queen Elizabeth was overwhelmingly popular and well respected, but her son on the other hand has a major image problem, strained family relationships, endless scandals, and lingering allegations of racism against him. Charles confronts those challenges at the age of 73, the oldest monarch ever to take the throne in a lineage that dates back a thousand years, alongside his wife Camilla who was equally controversial and universally disliked. In short, the British public sees the new king as weak, vain and ill-equipped for the role of sovereign. Although Charles has taken a stand on important environmental issues such as sustainability and climate change, he has fallen pitifully short on animal 
welfare issues. He has also been ridiculed for admitting that he talks to plants and obsesses over hating modern architecture. But more than anything, he got a whole lot of backlash for speculating about the complexion of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's future children. He allegedly asked Camilla, I wonder what the children would look like, and lowering his voice, asking, I mean, what do you suppose the children's complexions might be? So the allegations of racism were pretty hard to ignore. Number 9. Short Reign With Queen Elizabeth II's death on Thursday, King Charles III has now become the oldest person in British history to be king at age 73. But the fact is that Charles's reign is inevitably going to be far shorter than Queen Elizabeth's. So the fact that King Charles will have a much shorter reign concerns some people. Why? Change on a grand scale can be scary, and people inherently don't like the idea of instability, which is something that they never had to worry about with Queen Elizabeth. Throughout the nation, she was a symbol of stability and order, even managing to outlast 12 US presidents. So after all, at Charles's age, some might question that he will be unable to tackle royal tours with the same vigor as his mother, and with the 1937 Regency Act, there are only four family members that can act on the king's behalf when he is Sick, incapacitated, or out of the country. But that's a major problem because currently, two of those four people are out of action. Prince Andrew is now disgraced from his scandal surrounding Jeffrey Epstein, and Prince Harry is ineligible because he lives abroad. So it's a bit of a messy situation. Number eight, they hate Camilla. A survey from BGM Research revealed that only 20% of people think Camilla should take the title of queen. Given that Prince Charles is now married to the other woman, that may also make people feel feel less inclined to get behind him as the reigning monarch. Back in the 90s, one of the biggest scandals to rock the British royal family was when Charles was caught having an affair with Camilla. The transcript of their phone sex was published on the front pages for days, and was so controversial at the time because he was still married to Princess Diana and she was married to Andrew Parker Bowles. The transcript reads like something out of a used bookstore romance novel. The incident ultimately broke Camilla's 20-year marriage and publicly humiliated her her husband and children, and played a major role in Charles and Diana's divorce, which would come only a few years later and was requested by the Queen herself. So it's likely that the new king will never be able to fully live down the scandal. Number 7. Questionable Parenting Charles has always had a bit of a rocky relationship when it comes to being a father to his two sons William and Harry. In fact, after an heir to the throne had been secured, Diana said that Charles had been hoping their second child would be a girl, and obviously it wasn't. In her biography, Diana said she knew Harry was a boy, but kept it a secret until after he was born, as Charles actually had a negative reaction, saying, oh god, it's a boy, and commented on his red hair. But this is nothing compared to the hospital incident. In 1991, eight-year-old Prince William underwent emergency surgery for a skull fracture after being hit by a golf club to the head while playing with schoolmates. The young prince was kept overnight at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital following an hour-long operation. Diana Diana spent the night sleeping in a bed set up near William's room so she could look after her son, whereas Charles took a much different approach. Rather than stay and comfort his wife and injured son after a 15 minute visit, the prince left the hospital to go to the opera. It's no surprise that when Buckingham Palace informed the press of the prince's decision to keep his previous plans but keep in touch with doctors, he was completely bashed by the tabloids. Number 6. Bad Attitude Many Brits think that Charles won't be a good king and fear that he just doesn't have what it takes to rise to the occasion. Whether it's because of his personality traits or capabilities or something else entirely, if people don't have confidence that he will do a good job, it will be hard for them to get behind him. In fact, when it comes to best-selling books about the real life of the royals, you'll see that Charles isn't exactly praised by biographers. In fact, some of his private rants and tantrums have been made public, further damaging his reputation. It was 2005 during a holiday in the Swiss Alps just a few days before his wedding to Camilla, and the new king's general frustration boiled over and he made a rather awkward comment to Harry and William, because he didn't seem to realize that there was a microphone nearby. He answered the reporter's question politely, and then through gritted teeth, muttered under his breath, bloody people, I can't bear that man, he's so awful he really is. 
And yes, the microphones picked up every word. It was just plain awkward, but it goes to show you just how much Charles loves to complain. Number five, marriage to Diana. Charles's marriage to Diana didn't exactly get off to the best start, especially when we think back to their 1981 engagement interview. When he was asked if he loved Diana, he looked very nonchalant and just said, whatever love means, which caused a lot of people to scratch their heads. And years later, Diana actually admitted that the moment had traumatized her. When the couple wed in 1981 in front of a global television audience of more than 750 million people, they seemed to be perfect for each other. But behind the scenes, the marriage had extreme problems and it became apparent that Charles was having an affair with Camilla. A heartbroken Diana exposed the affair in an infamous 1992 interview saying, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Charles publicly admitted to being unfaithful in his own interview and the couple divorced in 1996. There was already public outrage growing against him, but it all came to a head when the princess was killed in a Paris car crash in 1997. From that point on, there were vitriolic outpourings in the press against both him and Camilla, and his popularity sank to an all-time low. So the British public, who was still very protective of Diana, still haven't been able to forgive Charles for how he treated her during their ill-fated marriage. Number four, too political. Blame the British press or Charles's self-created scandals over the years, but the more salacious or negative details of his life always seem to make the headlines. In 2015, the Black Spider memos caused quite a stir for him. The collection consisted of 27 memos that he sent in 2004 and 2005, lobbying British Prime Minister Tony Blair for the policy changes that he'd hoped for, including promoting alternative medicine and even asking to replace military helicopters. This was a pretty serious scandal because members of the royal family are supposed to stay out of politics and remain neutral, especially the ones who were always destined to be king. But Charles is often not shy about sharing his opinion on political matters, and this has led to him being criticized for it, possibly to the detriment of his future reign. And then in September of 2021, Charles had a brand new scandal to contend with. The chairman of the Prince Foundation, Michael Fawcett, was accused of bribing a Saudi billionaire with knighthood and UK citizenship if he was willing to donate to the foundation. So far, the investigation is still ongoing. Number three, they prefer William. William, Kate, and their three children are adored all throughout England. In fact, a survey by BGM Research reveals that nearly half of the British public wants Prince Charles to step aside and give the throne to his oldest son. The couple have now been married for nearly a decade and The Atlantic called their relationship a fairy tale, with their picture-perfect family and their lack of scandals. Plus, Prince William and Prince Harry are the most liked royals since records began, so it makes sense that people want to see them on the throne. But experts believe this would be nearly impossible. The bigger question now is how long King Charles will decide to reign now that he has taken the throne? Will he do the job for a couple of years before abdicating and handing the crown to his eldest son? Throughout their lives, the younger generation of the royal family has tried to find a balance between the fast-changing society that they have now and the rigid institution that is the monarchy. This tension has practically torn the brothers apart. While William leads a life of traditional duty, charity work, and military pageantry, Harry resides outside LA with his American ex-actress wife Meghan, who seems to be more interested in Hollywood than Buckingham Palace. The brothers, who were once very close, are now barely on speaking terms. Number two, Taj Mahal photo. One of the most iconic photos ever taken of Diana was shot during a visit to India, with Charles in February of 1992. The couple were expected to visit the Taj Mahal together, but Diana went on her own, which led to the headline-making photo that was a nail in the coffin for the new king's public image. It became the defining and memorable image of the tour. But why? Well, Charles practically abandoned his wife to visit some random architecture school while Diana sat alone on a bench in front of the most famous monument of love. At the time, she told reporters her visit there was a very healing experience. But she did say, it would have been better if both of us had been here, but my husband has to be in Delhi. The image was so powerful because it became the embodiment of Diana's loneliness and isolation, and really solidified Charles's image as a villain, opening him up to harsh criticism for not accompanying her. Years later, in 2016, William and Kate visited the exact same place and recreated the photo sitting side by side. In fact, the memory of his mother must have been very overwhelming there, because William actually started crying and was clearly overcome with the emotion of her memory. 
And coming in at number one, Too Outspoken. Charles has been outspoken on a whole range of sensitive issues, from genetically modified crops to homeopathic medicines and architecture. Interestingly enough, he has always been a strong climate change activist and has been speaking out about it since 1968. Charles was a prominent backer of the 2015 Paris Climate Accord and discussed the subject with Donald Trump over tea in December of 2019. This has made him a lot more of a divisive figure than his mother, who barely cracked an expression during her 70 year reign, let alone expressed a single opinion. But Elizabeth's legendary ability not to offend was more strategic than many people realize. Charles has also said some outrageous things throughout his lifetime, like, I'm not really good at being a performing monkey. I'm not prepared to just perform whenever they want me to perform on that sort of score. And that's called a microphone. It's a big sausage that picks up every time you say. But he also angered quite a few people when he infamously said, do you seriously expect me to be the first Prince of Wales in history not to have a mistress? And let's not forget that notorious interview where he insisted that he was faithful to Princess Diana up until he felt the marriage was broken. Oh, <laughs>